So, I just finished watching Across the Spider-Verse, and I think it is an amazing movie. Uh, just like everyone else thinks, very common ideals. Some people might not enjoy it, some people will. Uh, I enjoyed it, and I can't wait for the next part to come out, because I really want to see what happens. Also, a uh, spoiler warning, there is going to be some spoiler talking about some characters in this, mo uh, in this video, but it's just, just letting you know now, spoilers. First one was amazing, and this was even better in terms of animation, character design, especially Miles growing up like an inch because, you know, teenagers growing up, amazing as always. And, um, like the Spider Man and the different varieties, the varieties of Spider Man is just amazing. But the problem is that sometimes that when we have movies like this, some people tend to look too much into detail and tend to make up headcanons just to make themselves feel happy or to just assume things with their theories. But I just don't like it when people force their headcanons onto a character and it's not confirmed by the writer or the director that this is the character. So first of all, uh, I want to talk about Gwen's world. Uh, so when I, when I watched the Spider-Verse uh, movie, part two, Gwen's world is amazing because it feels like those emotion rings that you know you you wear and oh it's supposed to change depending on your emotion and watching her scenes in her world is just beautiful and so well animated the fact that every time Gwen is on scene in her own world and the background is a color depending on her feelings is just something that it really amazes me because I love it that they they try to express her emotions. If you couldn't see it in her face, you could express it through the background colors. Uh, for example, let's say she most of the time because you know she's feeling down because she has no friends and Miles is her only friend. Blue and purple mostly represents like depression, sadness, or, or calmness, but also mostly sadness. So when she's on screen talking to her dad about stuff, she's sad and stuff. And then when she hugs her dad, it just becomes pink. Because it's love, red, it's red, love. Well, I mean, red's mostly anger, but like, you know, pink, salmon, that, those color pairs, you know what I mean. And it's just so amazing to see that color. And there are small details in her room that we will talk about as well, because I think people look too much into detail when they're watching a movie. When I watch a movie, I watch a movie to enjoy. I want to see the Spider Man, I want to see the amazing stuff that they animate, that, that Sony is hitting back after like a few bad animations, but still, they made amazing animation again. Um, but yeah, when it comes to the transgender ally thing in her poster, which is so small to see, it's not a problem. But the problem is when people tend to, uh, like, they make this headcanon, like, there's only a few videos I saw on TikTok that's, like, pretty annoying, but it's a headcanon for them to think that Gwen is trans, or Peter's trans, because, you know, he got bullied, so he's obviously a transgender. I think this should stop being forced upon characters. <clears throat> Gwen Stacy has not been confirmed by the writer or hinted at that she's a trans. And it doesn't matter if she is a trans because, you know, it, it's 2023. But it's just that when you force a gender on a character that's mostly loved and you say, oh, this is my headcanon. Um, yeah, she's trans apparently. And oh, no, no, Peter's trans. Like, don't do that. Please stop. It, it messes up the character and it's just... It's just one of the main concerns why a lot of movies nowadays that are woke, quote unquote, fail because they force this thing onto people and they're like, they don't work around the character. Gwen's character is amazing. In this movie, I kind of disliked her because of things, but she had her reasons, but I'm still going to dislike her. It's just that I feel like people tend to add headcanons just to make themselves feel happy in a world where they don't feel happy, I guess. So anyway... Gwen's world palette is amazing because it's literally her feelings and it's put into perspective on what she's feeling, right? When she confronts her dad, the whole scene is a purple and blue, while her dad is covered in red because he's like, I guess he's angry because he still thinks that Gwen is the reason why um, Peter died in her world. Now, people who are paying too much attention to detail will say, oh my god, she's trans, like, like I said. And I said, sure, I guess, but then that's not the main concern. This is about... Like, you're focusing too much on Gwen when you should be focusing on the fact that she's a girl who just lost her best friend. Her dad's trying to hunt her, and she has nowhere else to go. So yeah, if you may, you may think a lot saying that oh, because the background is purple and blue, it's it's just she's trans. No, it's not. It's just her feelings. Is that she's feeling sad. She's very lonely in her world. Her only person or ally she has is her dad. Now, if you want to talk about the trans, uh, tr protect all trans kid. 
My assumption is just that she is an ally. That's it. And that her dad's also an ally. Because, you know, there are parents who are supported and open-minded. Not all parents are evil. There are actually some parents that care about the LGBT community. And then even though they, they themselves are not gay or trans or lesbian, there are good people and good parents out there that actually are just want to be allies. So like I said, you you can go ahead and make your head canon and make your theory, but just try not to be a Miguel where you try to force things upon people and then try to make them like, oh yeah, she's trans because you know the colors. Second, uh... I just want to talk about the relationship between Miles and Gwen, and also Spider Bite. I, I think the one thing that messes me up with the uh, the community sometimes is just that um, Spider Bite and Miles talk for a few seconds, and people are like, "Oh yeah, I shit them. Now kiss." It's like, no, no, we we don't want that. We don't want to force things onto characters that they just barely met. Like, okay, shipping is fine. Yeah, platonic shipping also works too. There's no need to be always a romantic uh, shipping. But to f to like force ship a character with another character just because you feel like they, they have a better, um, what is that, chem chemistry together? It's just kind of like, ugh, it's just nasty. So anyway, uh, talking about Miles and Gwen, they are both 15 and 16. Obviously, Gwen is older by 13 months or something, which she said in the first movie. So having them being platonic friends is perfectly fine they don't need to be romantic sure maybe in the future they might have feelings because in the comic in some of the comics gwen and miles they marry each other and have kids but right now they're teenagers and forcing teenagers to like have romantic relationships is just not right just let them have their adventures together let them grow up and then when they turn 2021 20, and there's so much vibes and so much romantic tension as Pat, uh, like patrick the indian spider-man said it's just, there you go, then you can have your ship. Uh, other than that, um, this community sometimes has its ups and downs with the Spider-Verse movie. Uh, th this is just my take. I Of those fans that like want to make up anything out of anything, so like they just make big deal or anything. But the worst people in this Spider-Man community are the ones that are ignorant as hell. Like, can can you not agree to a plus-size Spider-Man? Did you not see a gigantic Tyrannosaurus swinging <laughs> to catch Miles? And that's just, like, something that's, that's mind-blowing. If the webs can hold the Tyrannosaurus, or Tyrannosaurus, T-Rex, whatever, it can definitely hold a plus-size woman. And it's okay, because as the great Stan Lee once said, anyone can wear the mask. And the spider sonas I see on this platform are just amazing like from from being like a straight spider-man to being the lgbt plus spider-man hell even mexican spider-man's so a lot of spider-man's you are your own spider-man so basically in a way technically your spider sona is a canon because like i said again anyone can wear the mask just please don't make your character personality based on lgbt or like that because one that's boring, that's boring character writing, and two, that's just lazy character creation. If you base your Spider-Man just because you're gay, um, I got big news for you, buddy, that's, that's not, that's not gonna work. But if you, if they're gay, but, they're like, their persona is amazing, like, their, their personality, what they like, what they are, that is what makes a Spider-Man. Not just because he's a gay guy and he's gonna flaunting, or, like, even, hell, even lesbian Spider-Man, just because, oh yeah, I'm lesbian, that's what, that's, that's my personality. No. Don't ever make your character based on their sexuality. You base your characters on who they are, what they do, and what makes them them. That is how Peter Parker is one of the best um, superheroes, in my opinion, because he can relate to us. He's literally just a teenager who is struggling through life and trying to do two things at the same time. But yeah, I'm, I might go back and watch the movie again. It's just, it was amazing to watch. I... Definitely gonna go through it again, make sure I don't miss anything, any details, because I was like half watching, half drawing this, uh, this, this thing, so, yeah, uh, yeah, that's all to say, bye now.